here's a little look at some of the drawings. Little did she know she would be cooking and baking a lot. A really long time career goal that came true. Bought a beautiful watercolor notebook. The more I look into it, the more I know I'm going to have to take a lot more time to be able to do this book, but that's fine. Hi, I'm Sana and get ready to travel with me through space and time as I look back at some of my resolutions over the past years. The last few years have been unpredictable to say it in the nicest way. I used to make a resolutions video every year. It's a really nice way to keep yourself accountable, to check in. The kind of resolutions I've made over the years have really changed. And in this video, I want to take a look back at some of my past resolutions that I never actually posted about online, starting a few months before COVID started, right up to now, to 2022, where also I made resolutions at the beginning of this year. And I wanna check in on those and see how I'm doing. And just maybe laugh at my past self for some hilarious resolutions I came up with, which were obviously entirely impossible once COVID started. So roll the clips. Welcome to 2021. Now, usually a few months before the end of the year, I take another look at my goals list or I even write them out and put them on the wall so I can see them throughout the year. For obvious reasons, I did not do that this year. And while I was writing my new goals for 2021, I thought, okay, I should rewatch my old video to you know, see how I did uh, and just to remind myself of what my resolutions were. I have it here on my laptop. Number one, no surprise, read a hundred books. For lots of previous years, I would do the 50 book challenge. And then I think that was quite a hard challenge for me to reach. It's definitely become a little bit easier to hit every year. So I thought, okay, I'm going to do a hundred with 50 kind of being the minimum and hundred being the ideal. But I think because I was really busy with work, I kind of took on as much work as I could this year because of obviously how precarious work situations were. Did not get as much reading done as I would have liked. One full day of creating a week. I'm gonna block it out in my calendar. I think this was the year where I had some points where I think I did really well in balancing the freelance work and the creative and some months where the creative stuff just went out of the window. And I think it's a bit of a learning curve of like, when should you be available as a freelancer and things like that. And I definitely throughout points in the year kind of set different boundaries. And that's something I really want to continue working on in the new year. Draw a little bit, even if it's 10 minutes every day. Ooh, okay. I definitely have done more creative pursuits this year when it comes to like some drawing, some digital drawing, some watercolors, some lino cutting, things like that. But I definitely did not do it every day. I would love to learn some Irish. As some of you might know, my boyfriend is Irish. I'm Dutch. I would like to teach him some Dutch. We've kind of been like exchanging words and I taught him the Dutch alphabet recently. So I think that would be a really fun Way to learn. I haven't even been to Ireland in probably a year and a half. Again, we had plans to go this year, that didn't happen. Um, I've really figured out that I am a visual learner and especially with like the pronunciation and how different like written Irish is, I need to see things written down. So while for him, I can like say the days of the week and he repeats them and then he remembers them. I really cannot do that. Are there any words I remember? Very little. Uh, mala scola backpacks. <laughs> that's it. That's all I've got. Also, this year I want to cook and bake as much as I can to reduce waste and also to save some money. Well, well, well. Little did she know she would be cooking and baking a lot. Um, I mean, the number of times I went to a restaurant this year, it's very, very small. I've done some good baking and cooking this year, I think. It's also been really fun seeing loads of other people bake and cook more on Instagram. And I think that's been really helpful to kind of get inspiration from there. My brother, who also lives in London, has been baking and we've been like exchanging recipes with my mom, who's in the Netherlands. I made a beautiful like Christmas loaf, but like the Dutch version. I feel good about that. This year, I want to keep a really close track of my savings. I've opened different accounts. I have a spreadsheet. Sat down about two weeks ago and drew up this full spreadsheet of everything I want to do this year. Really broke it down to like exactly how many day rates I would have to work a month to keep up with that. That's an interesting one. I did pretty well in the first months. And then again, when I was just sitting at home and only buying groceries, I didn't really keep track of the like specific budget, but I just created a Notion account. And so now I have a new budget spreadsheet on Notion. My savings account, I had a spreadsheet where I was sort of saying like, oh, this percentage of my savings that's in the account is actually for 
trips. <laughs> this is for when I want to start my pension, which I'm in the middle of doing right now. I'd like to make a list of 25 things that I want to do in London, places to visit, places to eat, walks to go on, just things I haven't done yet, and do those ah. this year. Right, so 25 new things to do in London. If one of them was just walking around my neighborhood and finding every alleyway that I hadn't explored yet, I didn't even get around to making the list. New things I did in London included cycling, uh, not taking any public transport for months, months, and months. Let's have a look at my 2021 resolutions now, which actually I never shared publicly. It didn't really feel like the right time last year, but I made them privately, basically. So let's have a look at those. The first few are all failures, but it gets better after that. There are a few repeaters as well. Number one was to keep one day a week for creating. So I'm a freelancer and I wanted to keep one day a week for my own projects, things like YouTube. Again, I did not do that very successfully. I think I just took on all the work I could get, again, because of uncertainty and things like that. So that is still a thing that obviously I haven't quite figured out yet. Number two was to read 100 books in a year and I ended up with 59, which I'm pretty happy with. Again, 50 being kind of the minimum I wanted to do. This one's quite interesting. Number three was to draw twice a week or follow like a creative tutorial every week. I didn't do many like tutorials or any courses, but I did for quite a few weeks join the Fat Life Drawing sessions on Zoom. I don't think I'd ever done any proper life drawing before, but this was so fun. You're on this big Zoom room together and you can see everyone drawing, but you can also totally keep your drawings private if you want to. And it's just such a lovely welcoming community. A lot of the profits go to charity and to the person that's posing themselves as well. I've shown some of the drawings I did on Instagram stories, but here's a little look at some of the drawings. I don't have a lot of them uh, next to me right now, but I wanted to show these. One of my friends, Pip, joined as well a few times. So we knew we were both like in the session. I would highly recommend that. It was really fun and it felt like a really good challenge because I hadn't really done much like it before. And it also was a really good way to discover what kind of medium I like the most because I would try different pencils and crayons and paint during some of the sessions and then very quickly I'd realize which ones I like and which ones I don't. And also the quality of what I made with different tools like varied significantly. Number four was clear out and organize all my belongings, which is too vague. I did some of it. And then number five was go on a solo trip to the countryside. Very uncertain year for travel, obviously. But at some point I met up with Rosiana, who was doing like a cycling tour across England. She's made some great videos about it as well, which I will link in the description. Uh, she went like literally all across England and Scotland. And I managed to meet up with her when she was in Yorkshire. And then as she continued on, I stayed in Haworth by myself for I think it was three days, which is the town where the Bronte sisters lived. I went on a little hike by myself. I visited the Bronte Parsonage. It's a very, very tiny town. So it was an interesting experience like staying there by myself for three days, but that was fantastic. And I'd love to do something like it again. And I'm definitely gonna make a full video about my experience of staying there and recommendations for when you're visiting yourself as well. Then I wanted to create my top 10 genre list videos. So like my top 10 fantasy books, my top 10 sci-fi books. Obviously, as you know, I did not do that. The number seven was work with five brands from my like companies I'd love to work with uh, when it comes to freelance work or my channel or my Instagram, things like that. And I don't know if I made that much of a specific list, but looking back at the year, I worked with the Y Book Prize and the Dutch Literature Foundation. I feel like those are two big highlights. Number eight is quite funny. So I listened to the podcast, My Favorite Murder, and for a long time, it is almost all I listen to. I've listened to every episode about four times. So one of my resolutions was to listen to some new podcasts. I actually totally nailed this one. Some of my favorites were You're Dead to Me, the like comedy and history podcast, Books Unbound, which I was guest on actually, so you can have a listen to that episode. Real Dictators, which is a podcast about dictators. The Dropout about Elizabeth Holmes, which was fantastic. And What Page Are You On, which is also a fantastic book podcast with recommendations that are like very often books I haven't heard about before, but are totally something that I'm interested in. So really enjoyed that podcast. I asked for recommendations from you a few months ago and I got loads and loads of them. So I have all these podcasts to try out and hopefully I can do a video recommending tons of them. And then this is maybe my favorite one. I wanted to self-study 
the romantics and gothic fiction. And I think I made an okay start on it. I am like 200 pages into Romantic Outlaws, but Mary Wollstonecraft and Mary Shelley. I read Carmilla, one of the original vampire books. Uh, also the short story, The Vampire same thing. And then I also started reading Charlotte Bronte A Life, which I brought with me to Haworth. I've made a start. Have I completed all of these? No, there is much more to do. And then finally, I wanted to organize more meetups and make some new online friends and meet some fellow booktubers and creators. So obviously like meetups with lots of people were not the thing to do in 2021, but I did manage to meet Joel from Fictional Fates and Leora from Books with Leo, who I met up with when I went to Rotterdam. So I feel like this is a semi-success. Finally, I also like to write a short list of the year of things that were big achievements or things that I'd like to remember because it's so easy to forget, like a year can just turn into a bit of a blur. And then I also have one big thing I learned. So big things that happened that I was just really excited about is I got to be a YA book prize judge, which was such a fantastic process. I read the 10 books on the shortlist. I have a video that I'll link where I talked about all of the books, but that just felt like such an honor and like uh, a really long time career goal that came true. And then also my book club journal was published in May, which was such a highlight of the year. It still feels weird because I didn't get to do, you know, a launch party or do any events or anything like that because of COVID. And this feels like it's now like a lifetime away already. But in this year, I also started a book club with some of my friends. And so I've been able to fill out the journal myself and starting that book club is a highlight as well. Finally, uh, did a freelancer thing I should have done a long time ago, but I started an ethical pension that I'm now saving into. Doing the research for that was a very, very long process, but I feel like, um, you know, I've started and then I can only expand on my knowledge of like personal finance and things like that. And then the big thing that I learned that I've had to admit to myself is that for me, time blocking doesn't work unless I'm doing it in at least sections of half a day. I've tried numerous times to like block out different you know, a few hours here, a few hours here, and like fill up my whole week's schedule and try and get my work done that way. I think I might be the kind of person that just needs to take like a half day or a full day to complete a certain task or work on a project because I get too distracted if there's too many things going on. That was 2021. Now let's talk about my 2022 resolutions. Obviously, once again, we don't really know what to expect. So I planned lightly and I kind of wrote down some sentences that kind of describe the theme that I used to make these resolutions. What brings me joy? How do I want to spend my time? And what do I want to share with people? And the sharing doesn't mean like, oh, I think I'm oversharing parts of my life. It's more about what kind of topics do I want to talk about and what like from my own experience do I then want to turn into videos, Instagram posts, things like that. All right, let's run through these 10 goals. Number one, I want to read 75 books. Hundreds not gonna happen. We're doing 75. Number two, I want to go on a solo trip to the countryside again. Haven't decided where yet. Number three, a continuation of a past one. I want to read five like non-fiction or gothic or romantic classics. Then number four is one I've been thinking about for quite a long time. I would love to start a discord for UK book creatives and online creators. It's like a place where people can ask each other for advice and chat and organize collaborations and become friends, but also talk about the business side of it. I am really, really lucky that I have a lot of friends around me who are also online creators and I can talk to them about the nitty gritty and contracts and contacts, but also just like where to find inspiration and how to make new friends. And I keep meeting people who don't really have a network like that. So I would love to start this, but I don't really want to run it by myself. So if you happen to be watching this video and you are interested, do send me, I don't know, an email, a DM, whatever you like. And number five is that I would like to visit five new to me historical buildings in London. Number six is quite a big one. I want to write a proper pitch for a nonfiction book that I have an idea for. I am not a fiction writer. But I do love nonfiction and practical guides and things like that. And I have an idea for one. So I want to write the pitch for that. Number seven is a returning one. You might've heard me say this before, but it's an idea that's still on my mind and I want to make it happen at some point. And that is that I want to launch my sci-fi slash apocalyptic podcast, book podcast. I need to find the time 
to do this because it's something that even after a few years I'm still really passionate about and I really want to make it happen. Number eight, I want to regularly update who I follow on Instagram and on YouTube. So I unfollowed about 300 people on Instagram in one week last year and it was great and it meant that I could interact more with the people that I was still following and I was getting to see. Like I basically wanted to make sure that I was seeing the content by the people that I really want to follow and I'm hoping to keep doing that in 2022, find new people that I'm not watching yet and have a look through the people that I'm currently following and see who I'd like to see more from. Then number nine, again, kind of a repeater from last year, is to complete 10 courses or tutorials. So it doesn't have to be a really long course. I've already uh, bought a shorter course about like fonts and typography, but it could also be like a single like water coloring tutorial. And then finally, it's a YouTube resolution, which is to create a series about literary travel in the UK. And I'd like to make six episodes this year. For myself in an ocean doc, I also wrote a bunch of other lists, which are like financial goals, personal goals, career goals, but also things like, I wanna go on five hikes. Uh, we are hopefully moving to a new flat and I want to have a dining table so I can have like a small dinner party at some point. And I want to do more wild swimming potentially in 2022. Okay, so we're back halfway through 2022 and just a really quick checkup on how my resolutions are doing for this year. So I think that the best ones so far have been the reading more gothic classics. I went to a workshop at my local bookshop. I bought a romantics and gothics like short introduction to. I'm halfway through a bunch of classics. So I think I'm on a roll. Like the, <laughs> the star has been made. We're slowly rolling along. And then this week I did a big sort of working session on the pitch for my nonfiction book. Sometimes you can't make time for something specifically and then when the inspiration hits, maybe even though you should be doing something else, I just go with it. I made a mood board. I, a few weeks ago, went to Stanford's The Travel Bookshop in London and bought a bunch of books, did some market research. And I very much know, like the more I look into it, the more I know I'm going to have to take a lot more time to do the background reading and get some of the experience that I need to be able to do this book, but that's fine. It's not a short-term project. Then I've also gone to a few lectures online and have started some tutorials, did some master classes. So I feel like that sort of tutorial learning goal is doing pretty well too. And even though this particular year, the sort of drawing and painting wasn't part of my official goals and resolutions, again, I think I've made a good start with it. I bought a beautiful watercolor notebook. I've really found that going to places and then just drawing what I see has been really good motivation. It means you don't really get stuck on, you know, what should I paint, what should I draw? And so I've really enjoyed doing that on the go. Feeling good about the resolutions. Um, I guess a slightly more positive ending to this very mixed video. So this is the official roundup. We are all up to date. Thanks for coming on this journey with me. I hope you're all doing okay and I'll talk to you soon. Doey!